So in today's video, we're going to be looking at how you can poll attendees within a Microsoft Teams meeting. And this is fantastic. It allows you as an organizer or a presenter to use Microsoft Forms to create quick polls. And you can create these polls before the meeting even starts and even launch it before it starts to gather information ahead of the meeting. Or you can launch these polls within the meeting itself and even on the fly, create ad hoc polls to gather quick feedback. So I think polls is really helpful throughout your Teams meeting journey. So let's dive in and take a look. Okay, so I'm now in Microsoft Teams. Let's get this party started. So what we're gonna look at is I have this meeting here for Microsoft Teams training, and we wanna get ahead of the game. We wanna be prepared before we go into the meeting. So we wanna go add polls, and we wanna go start creating a few before we get into the meeting. So to do that, all we're gonna do is just select the meeting. I'm just gonna select edit, and now we're here. Right now we can see that we have a few attendees that we've invited. We've got Megan and Alex here, but we wanna go ahead and add polls. So to do this, it's nice and easy. On the top here, you just need to hit the plus for adding a tab. And once you've selected that, all you need to do then is just go ahead and select forms. And once you've selected forms, it gives you a little bit of information about it, but just go ahead and hit add. And now it's just telling you what we're gonna do. So create a poll before or during your meeting to collect responses. So let's just go ahead and hit save. So now that we've added polls to our team meetings, we can do a few things. Firstly, we could go create a new poll ourselves and add in all the information. But what's cool here is at the bottom, we're also getting poll suggestions. So you know, Microsoft's recommending you could put, how are you feeling today? Which department are you in? So on and so forth. And you might think, you know what, how are you feeling today? That's a pretty good poll for a training session. Let's just get a beat on how people are feeling. So if I'm happy with that, I could just hit select and then do add poll to meeting. And now at this point, I can see within polls, that this is a draft poll. So you can see that here, it says draft and it's in green. And nobody's gonna be able to respond to this right now until I click launch. And there's a couple of other things we can do here. We can drop the arrow down. I could edit the poll or I could delete the poll. If I went into edit, it's worth noting there are a few options here. I mean, one, I could change all the different answers here, but I could also add more options as well. But it is worth noting that there's only a maximum of six options per poll, and each poll can only be one question. Then you can make a few changes at the bottom here. I could say, you know, do I want people to be able to do multiple answers? Do I want to share the results automatically after voting? Do I want to keep the responses as anonymous? But also here, we've also got allow co-authors. So right now it's saying that only you can access this poll while it's in a draft, but once it's launched, any co-presenters will be able to edit it. So just worth knowing, I'm just gonna go ahead and hit save. But now we wanna create our own poll. So to do that, you just need to do create new, and now you can make all the changes you want. So we got the edit poll, what's the question gonna be? So in our case, we're gonna say, how comfortable are you with Microsoft Teams? And what's really neat here is, where I could have gone down and done the option one and write in very comfortable, option two, you know, somewhat comfortable, and then done add option six more times or whatever, is Microsoft is looking at the context of my question and has already given me suggested options. So I can just go ahead and do add all, and I'm happy with that. So I'm gonna just go ahead now and do save. So at this point, we have a couple of polls that we've prepared before the meeting. So let's go ahead and join the meeting now and start looking at what the user experience is once I launch these polls. So now we're in the Microsoft Teams meeting. We've got Alex, we've got Megan here, and we're looking at my environment as the organizer of this meeting. So to be able to get to polls within the Teams meeting, on the top here, all we need to do is hit this forms icon for polls. And on the right hand side, it's gonna bring up all the different polls. So we can again go create a new one ad hoc on the fly here, or we can see the polls that we already created. So again, if I went back to the Teams meeting back here, we have the polls we created. So we have the how are you feeling today and how comfortable are you with Microsoft Teams? So I could go and launch it from the actual calendar invite itself here within Teams, 
or we can be within the meeting and now I can go ahead and go, you know what, let's kick this off. I can either again edit the poll, delete the poll, but we want to launch this poll to see how everyone's feeling. So I can go ahead now and select launch. And now at this point, you'll notice instead of it being green and have a draft like we saw earlier, now it's gone red and this poll is live. So everyone's going to get a notification where they can start answering the poll itself. So as an organizer, I still have the option here to respond. So I could go ahead and say that, you know, I'm feeling excellent today. I'm excited for this Microsoft Teams training and then go ahead and hit submit. And once I've submitted that, we can instantly start seeing the results here on the right hand side. So now let's go ahead and look at what it looks like from Megan as an attendee of this meeting. So we're now here as Megan and we can see here because I'm in the Teams client that has actually popped this up just like it did when I was in the organizer. And I can now go ahead and answer the form. So I could go ahead and say, you know, I'm feeling good and I can submit that. And now I'm going to see that we have the excellent, which was the vote that I did as the organizer. And Megan can go ahead and see her results as well. Now I can just go ahead and hit done. And it is worth noting if we go to the conversation of this meeting is this is where all that forms information will be. So right now we can see that the poll is live and I've already answered it as good. But I could go ahead now and change my vote if I wanted to. So I could just say, you know, I'm just OK and submit that vote. And then it's gonna go ahead and change that for us on the fly as well. So now we've gone from good to just okay. So that's just worth noting and we'll talk about it a little bit more in a minute. So at this point, we've looked at it from a Teams client and we've looked at it as the organizer. Now we're just gonna to go to Alex's just so you can see it on a web browser as well. So we're now here as Alex on the web version. And I just wanted to show this because it doesn't pop up on the screen here within, I'm in Chrome right now, but what it actually does, it just gives them a notification in the conversation. And we saw the conversation earlier with Megan in the chat, where that's where you can go ahead and respond to the poll. So again, I could just come in here and submit the vote as Alex, and that's going to update for us as well. So at this point, we've looked at creating the poll as an organizer. We've launched the poll to make it live and Alex and Megan has responded. But now we're at a point, the meeting's going and we want to close that out and finish the results. So to do that, what you can do is where you've got view options here, you can drop that down and then do close poll. And now at this point, none of those attendees can now respond to the poll. So now this is done, I could go ahead and export the results as well. But we'll look at that again in a moment. So at this point, we still have our draft for how comfortable your Microsoft Teams. But I could also go ahead and create an ad hoc poll as well. So I could go ahead and do create new and then just ask a question, you know, do you love Microsoft Teams? Again, I'm just going to put the suggested options. I'm going to add them all um, and then just go ahead and hit save. So at this point, I've now gone ahead and created an ad hoc poll right within the Teams meeting. So again, it's still in draft. And we've seen now three different stages of this, draft, live, and closed. So now this poll is in draft. Again, we're gonna go ahead and just hit launch. And at this point, we can see now this poll is live and people can go ahead and respond. So I'm just gonna say, do you love Microsoft Teams? Yes, I'm gonna submit that. And really, that's all there is to it. When it comes to creating polls, and making it live. Now that we've looked at creating polls and responding to them, we also saw there that we just closed out a couple of our polls. And this is really interesting because now we're back as Megan and we can see here that we're looking at the, do you love Microsoft Teams? And even though she hasn't responded at this point, now that the poll has been closed, I'm not able to respond to this and change the end results. You can see here, I can hit yes, no, maybe, but it's not editing the end response. So that's just worth noting that you can go ahead and do that full lifecycle management of a poll. So let's now dive back to the organizer and look at how you can export the information as well. Okay, so we're now back as the organizer of this meeting and what we want to do is export the information. So at the end of the meeting or throughout it, we want to see how people are feeling, for example. So now on this drop down again, we could now reopen the poll if more answers are needed or if some more people just join the meeting. But we can also select export results. And where this saves to, as it nicely tells us, is it goes to files and downloads. 
So if I now go to my Explorer and we bring up downloads, you can see we now have an Excel file for how are you feeling today? So let's go ahead and load that. Now we can see from Excel, when did they complete the poll, what the email addresses are, what their name is, and what their response is as well. But you might be thinking, well, Harry, that only shows it for the, how are you feeling today? How about the, you know, the poll for, do you love Microsoft Teams? Well, this is important because if you export results, it only does it for that specific poll question itself. So if we now go back into Teams, I would have to go down to the, do you love Microsoft Teams and export that result as well. But let's do that another way. So at this point, let's just end the meeting. I'm gonna go ahead and do that. So now that the meeting has been ended, let's just imagine for a moment that a day or two has gone by and you still wanna get your poll results. Well, that's nice and easy to do. You can just come back to the calendar invite. So here we're going back to our Microsoft Teams training. And I'm just gonna go ahead and select that meeting. Let's just bring that up in full screen. And now on the right hand side, we still have our tab for polls. So if I select that, we now come into a very familiar environment where we can see all the different polls that we've created. And we can see that we've closed a couple of polls. So earlier we exported our results for how are you feeling today? But now I've come back to this and I want the information for do you love Microsoft Teams? So I can just go ahead now and just do export results straight from in this meeting tab. And it's gonna go ahead and do the same thing. It's gonna download that to our Explorer. And now you can really see what I mean by it only downloads the results Excel sheet for each of the different polls. So how are you feeling today? And do you love Microsoft Teams? So if I load that up, it's gonna be exactly the same, pretty much of when do we complete it? What's the email address? What's the name? and then what was the response. So there is one last thing I wanna mention is that this doesn't work within channel meetings. So just bear that in mind when you're creating your meeting and trying to add polls to it. But hopefully this video has been helpful. We've looked at the process of creating polls, launching them, getting feedback, and then how do we go ahead and close those polls out and get the results so that we can review them later on. So if you've enjoyed this, make sure you subscribe and we'll see you next week for another video.